Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to style, fluff, unbox, look at, play with, I don't know, my Merida wig. <laughs> So I actually ordered two of these. They were 25 pounds-ish, I think, and I ordered two for many reasons. One, in case I screw one up and I need to try again. Two, in case I don't screw it up but then decide I want to have one that's like more styled for Victorian wear. I don't know, that seems like it might be a thing. Uh, three, in case one isn't enough to be Merida because I've seen people taking the bottom off of one wig and attaching it to the bottom of another wig to like extend it. So I, anyway, bought two because it's coming from England and I didn't want to wait for another one. Should I screw one up? May have been overkill, but we're gonna find out. So I looked at Merida wigs online and I looked at a ton of them and the one that kept coming up that looked the best was one from Lush. So I thought it'd be cool to unbox it here for you and show it to you what it looks like when it comes out of the box. Let me show you what the Instagram hashtag of Lush Wigs Merida is because this is what I was teased with. I did hear from the reviews that when you open the box and take it out, it is not the wig that you're going to end up with when you do a lot of work on it. And that it does take a lot of work. Someone said nine hours and I was like, oh god. So uh, we're going to see how that goes. Someone else was like, this is not a wig for beginners. And I'm like, but I don't know what I'm doing. Cool. Also, it may look completely stupid on me. We have no idea yet, but I have a Merida costume, so gotta have the Merida wig. So anyway, I thought you, I would share my entire process, experience, whatever with this wig with you so that you could see what it was like when I got it and see what it was like when I was done. Okay, let's bust one of these open and see what it's like. Tips. Oh, wig cap, that's great. Cool. This is the package. And they did say it was going to be crusty and firm. So, and that is in fact what I'm seeing. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. I'm going to try it on like this so you can see what it looks like. And then I'm going to do all the finger brushing that they tell you to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see why the, the things are like, you need to fix it. <laughs> like, this hairline is horrible, needs more bangs so that you can not have this like burp line here. These curls are just crusty and too, like they need to be fluffed <laughs> oh i mean it is merida-y it looks silly on me but let's uh fluff for a bit and see what we can do Here's where we are. Here's what this looks like, which, dude, for like not very long of finger pulling this stuff out, like I feel it's kind of amazing. So I'm into it. I think this wig is gonna work out well. I might fluff a little bit more. I don't know. The hairline kind of bothers me, but also this is like 
a quick and dirty cosplay kind of situation so I'm not really that fussed with it and it's not like I'm like you know like the bangs help hide it um and I feel like it looks really good uh I don't think orange is my color like this is not the color for my skin tone despite the fact that I am Irish and my people also have hair like this and my hair does have red tone but not like orange like this so but um, I think it looks really good for a Merida wig and I'm excited about it. I might go look at some stuff on the internet to see about hairlines and whatever, if there's anything I can do about that. I thought I was going to hate these bangs and I totally actually don't. Like, I think they work for it. Um, I have, My hair is just in, like, pink tails behind me. But this is how fluffy it is in the back. I haven't really even seen it. <laughs> so I don't even know and now you guys know more than I do <laughs> so anyway this is really cool I'm enjoying this process for once a wig styling is not as bad as I thought it was gonna be I'm sure this could get a lot better I'm also new to this and I'm so, this is hot like this is heckin hot <laughs> by the way um, I'm new to this and like I don't know what I'm doing and so to make a wig go from let me just remind you what I looked like just a couple minutes ago to this I'm like, that's heckin' useful, thanks. Thanks, Lush Wigs. And this wig is full and thick and whatever, but it's also not super heavy, it's just hot, cause you know, this is plastic, which I have now on my head. I cannot imagine trying to do a summertime shoot with this. I have a wool gown and this thing on my head. This is gonna be a winter cosplay for sure. <laughs> All right, so I have my glasses back on so I can see the world again, which is useful, but yeah, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, there might be a few things I do to it, but pretty much that's it. Like, at the nine hours that that person was talking about were scaring the crap out of me. Like, what did you do? I wonder which one of the people it was. Like, of all those pictures, which one took the nine hours to, like, fix their wig in such a way? I mean, I did that whole thing in, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> so, I feel like I got away with something because I feel like this is, like, perfectly great for my my costume so I'm happy with it so the intent of this video was actually to have like a Q&A while I was fluffing it because I thought I would be sitting here for hours and hours but since that didn't happen there was like absolutely no need for that so maybe I'll do a little Q&A at the end of this video and if you are here for a lush wigs review about this Merida thing or to watch it get fluffed or whatever you can you can hop off now and if you want to learn more random facts about Noelle or my opinion about things, then stick around and I will chat to you <laughs> with some Q&A. If you like this video though, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys either later or in just a second in my normal hair. Okay, so I guess really I did have something else I was going to say about that, which is that I'm going to attach a wig clips on the inside of it. I need to figure out if I have any. I'm also seeming to miss my like hair nets and stuff so I gotta go find those I know that they exist in my house I just they're not in my weird box I have this crazy box I'll show it to you okay I have this crazy box and this box is full of like every kind of um like one of these things that you could want rubber bands but also like U pins and bobby pins in every color and whatever that way when Lynn McMaster's Danes to do my hair for me <laughs> for photo shoots I can be like here here are all the things enjoy these so uh so yeah I'm gonna sew hair hair I'm gonna sew wig clips into those and uh, into that and I'm actually I put it away and I'm actually not taking it downstairs and putting it away away because I need to do that tonight so I can cross it off my list Okay, so as I mentioned, I had asked for some Q&A things because I thought that this video was going to take a lot longer than it did, and it totally didn't, and that makes me so happy. What did you think was going to be hard until you tried it, Noelle? The Merida wig. Totally thought it was going to be hard. Turns out it wasn't that hard. I mean, to be fair, I don't have high standards about, like, how perfect this wig needs to be. It's not a lace front wig. It doesn't have, like, some crazy, like you know, widow's peak in the front to cover my widow's peak, like, it's, <laughs> it's a fairly a basic wig, but it will do for a just friends goofing off making them Disney things cosplay shoot. I am never going to, also, I'm not going to spend a billion dollars on a wig that doesn't look good on me because I'm pink and it's orange and orange and pink are kind of weird together. <laughs> so, it's good enough, and that is a lesson we can all learn from, is it's good enough. So, 
I have on my phone here some of the questions that got asked of me. The first one was, is COVID happening again this year? Okay, so this is kind of a complicated answer because the answer is no, and then also, but maybe yes, in a different way. So I said from the very beginning that COVID was a one shot pony. Like I was only doing it once, we were only doing it once. It hit at exactly the right time when people were trapped and starting to feel really stressed about being trapped and stuff. So to do it again this summer, I, I think people will be vaccinated and starting to run around the country more, so they'll feel less trapped, so it will be less. Mm. But there are a whole group of people out there in the world who are not able to come to costume college and who are, or are just like disabled and can't possibly do that. Or, you know, there's a million reasons people don't go to costume college. So while I don't think COVID is going to happen, that doesn't mean nothing's gonna happen. It doesn't mean that, I've heard rumor of more than one other like COVID-like thing happening. So definitely as soon as I have details that I'm allowed to share with you or that are concrete or whatever, then I will share those with you. I have heard a few people muttering things, so, and I have seen discussions being had about a couple of different things. Favorite Disney very loaded question person who left that who is this person charlotte nerd zone i cannot pronounce that name i'm really sorry i just butchered her name anyway charlotte um that is the name of my littlest kitty and i just love her and she's so fluffy and slightly evil are you slightly evil <laughs> um favorite disney is a loaded question because like what do you mean favorite disney movie favorite disney park favorite disney princess what is your favorite are we including marvel are we including pixar are we including like all that kind of stuff like what what is the okay so let's let's do a quick overview marvel iron man 100 percent always forever team tony don't at me about team cat team cap i'm like not not with you on that and it's fine we can still be friends and disagree about this but team tony I enjoy typically Pixar movies slightly more than I enjoy Disney movies, but I also dislike Pixar movies in some cases more than Disney movies. So Disney movies are kind of in a neutral space and Pixar movies are all over the place. Like, Up makes me cry and then I also love that movie. Inside Out, I hate that movie. I don't ever want to watch it again. It was like, I don't, I don't want to come to the movie theater and feel depressed. I do think it was really well made and I think that it's showing it to children is really important. I think that movie is a fantastic thing to have in the world. It's not for me. And I'm cool with that. I really like Brave. I really like Moana. I really like Raya. As you can tell, I like girls who take no guff. <laughs> uh, not to drag like Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella or whatever, but like, I don't need no man. I got a man, but I don't need one. So I enjoy princesses that are like that. So if you're asking about princesses, a um, favorite Disney movie is probably Fantasia. I love Fantasia, although there are some racist shiz in Fantasia, folks, like really not okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's that. Kind of spoiled my fun, but I mean, there's kind of really racist shiz in all of Disney, really. Pixar's getting better and Disney is, Disney is getting better. They are definitely getting better, so not to drag them, but favorite Disney park, Disneyland, always, forever. I have been to all of the parks except Shanghai at this point. They all have their things about them that are awesome. OG is my favorite. Largely because I got raised there, so yeah. What did I study in school? I studied politics. I'm a web producer. <laughs> someone else asked something about that too. Let me find that question. Ah, someone asked, what is useful to you about your degree? Just graduated with a B BA in poli sci in anthropology. Okay, this is from Rotting Fairy Wings. Uh, what is useful to me about my degree? Well, obviously I didn't go into politics and I realized probably three quarters through my senior year of college that I wasn't going to use my politics degree because when I get angry, I cry. If I went into politics, I would cry a lot. <laughs> so I decided that that wasn't a good idea. But it is really useful because I know things about people and how they work and political structures and how they work and because of politics I know a lot of things about history and how things happened and like the truth about things. You know how we're like kind of learning, relearning American history and we're learning like things are not what we thought they were or that the propaganda that they told us isn't exactly true. These are things that I've known for quite a while because I have to study like the actual 
politics of it and and I also know the reasons why people behave the way that they do like from that perspective also anthropology is gonna give you that clue too because man one of my favorite classes ever was anthropology that was such a great class anyway I do find that politics is actually super useful in my life it helps me like navigate the world it helps me have ra rational discussions my politics degree was really sensible because in a lot of cases they taught us to write the paper from both people's perspectives so like if you wrote um, about logging you would have to write your paper from an environmentalist position and also from the loggers position so you'd have to like research both sides and that is actually something that people don't do people frequently formulate an opinion based on like some random tidbit that they heard in the news or they got from their friend or they read in an article somewhere and they don't do research about whatever they're mad about from both perspectives to see like oh this is why these people need this, and this is why these people are acting this way, and this is why the pe these people are voting this way. So, it's sort of useful, actually, and it makes you think about the world in a different way, and I find that really useful in my life. It helps me keep, like, a more level head, although people who follow me on Instagram might know that I pop off quite a bit about things, so maybe I don't have a level head? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty, like, into people being treated fairly. Let's just say that. <laughs> this is a good one. How to use your cabbage. I'm tired of scrunchies. I need other ideas for stash busting. So I make hasifs a lot, housewives. They're fairly easy to make. You can like literally go look at a picture of one on Willoughby and Rose's site and probably know how to make it because it's not that complicated. So those are really good. They make really good gifts for people. People make pin cushions. What else do people do with small things? If you have ideas, like a lot of people use them for like quilt scraps and, they're, and you can also like save them and give them to people who you know who do quilts because they will totally love that. Especially people who, there's something called a crazy quilt, which I don't really understand. And apparently they love scraps. Um, so I, I suggest also not assuming you're the one that needs to use your scraps. Like. There is a wide network of people out there who might want your scraps, right? Like, make friends. Give your scraps away. I keep scraps that are big enough usually to do something with, and I don't worry about all the teeny tiny stuff. I just recycle it because you can recycle natural fibers where I live. And for the stuff that I have that isn't natural fiber because I do, like I make it, that Merida is a poly silk blend and I can't recycle those scraps. Um, I tend to keep pieces that are big enough and the ones that aren't, I just toss them and that's horrible, but... I cannot, I, might, I have limited amount of space and energy. If I know I'm gonna make something, like a bustle pad, I might save stuff for that. But those also get really heavy when you do that. Like my bustle pad is heckin' heavy. Boy, do I wish I had filled that with wool. I think the best thing is to just assume that you should keep scraps that are big enough to like make a quilt thing with and maybe not anything smaller than that, but then Talk to your local friends who do things and see if they need scraps for anything because you'd be surprised at what people will use scraps for. Like people use them for stuffing and all kinds of things. Also you can make like a, a footstool cushion thing, like a big one that's like, you know, like this big. You can make the outside of that and then just constantly stuff it with scraps and it will be heckin' heavy and that's actually awesome because it will be something really sturdy to sit on. Like when I think about that, I think about like um, a prayer pillow, I don't know. If you guys know what that is but like I'm, I'm not Buddhist but I did go to Buddhist temple for quite a little while and they have these like cute little pillows you can sit on in some of them <laughs> and they're like mm, this this deep and then big and round and you park your butt on that and it lets you achieve a lotus position easily and sit there and meditate and stuff on it so um, a footstool kind of situation and that'll take you years to fill and it's a great project because it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger right so and until then, it's just a scrap pile inside a thing that has a zipper and closes. Which is really the best thing about a scrap pile is when it has a zipper and it closes. <laughs> so, there's your idea. Is your husband into costuming and cosplay as well? Heck no, he hates it. <laughs> he doesn't hate it, hate it. Like, he has gone to things where he's, like, rented a tux and had, like, a mask and come with me. So that's a thing. But, like, to the level that I do it or, like, historically accurate, he's, like could care less. I mean, he thinks it's neat. He's super supportive. He will try to help me into my corset, stuff like that, but nah, it's not his jam. He plays video games. He's into that. It's cool. He does love photographing cosplayers because he's into photography. That's his jam. In fact, it's maybe helpful for you guys to know. We spend like 
70, maybe 60% of our vacation time separate. We take separate vacations because he wants to go do photography and he wants to get up at like 4 a.m. to go take a picture of the dawn over whatever and I'm just getting to bed. Maybe not even then. <laughs> so, and I want to go to cosplay conventions and stay up all night and party with my friends and stuff. And so we just, our interest on like our primary hobby or whatever is not the same and that's fine. So we just, he goes on photography trips and like does workshops and stuff and I go do my thing and it's perfectly cool. And I think that actually makes our relationship a lot healthier. Is there anything that you want to make that you won't yet because it has too many new skills? This is from Working Squirrel. No, I don't think so. I think there are things, wait, is that true? Do, are there things I think I'm not good enough to make? No, not really. It's, it's like new skills don't bother me. They don't scare me very much. Like most of the time I'm like, well, if a boy can do this, I can do this. <laughs> so I'm like, that's literally my motto for life. Like if a boy can do this, I can do this. But sometimes I suck at things and it doesn't turn out that I'm good enough after I try, but there's nothing I'm scared of doing because it has too many new skills. I will just work up to that thing. Like I will do it slowly, but I'm not gonna not make it. I guess it would be that I'm like putting it off maybe, but I'm working towards it if there was something like that. There's not really anything that I don't think I could probably handle or have friends who have the skills to teach me how to do. There are things that I think I suck at like horribly. Like I am really, really bad with hair. I cannot do hair. I cannot make those hair things. Like Lynn's like, oh, you just do this and this and this. And I'm just like, Lynn, you are a magical unicorn and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so there are things like that, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm scared to try it or whatever. Like I'm just gonna keep pushing it until I get better at it. That's how you get better. I have this thing about montage thinking where I montage think a lot or <laughs> like I see it in my head. Oh, like at the beginning of COVID, I was like, I'm gonna have a full 18th century wardrobe and I'm gonna be an excellent corseteer by the end of this. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be amazing. And I see the montage and I've like made two things. <laughs> so like, mm -mm. no, I think about the montage, but in reality, I am constantly pushing myself forward. I just keep trying things. And if it sucks, I'm like, well, that sucked. But now I know what all the things I did were wrong that time. And I'll just keep trying. <laughs> Making sleeves fit when using French seams. This is so easy. I don't French seam the sleeves. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> I uh, go ahead and sew those in normally and then I fell the seam. So there is no, and I fell it to the lining usually so that you can't see the felling from the outside. But yeah, or I'll just tuck in the edges and fell that down. But yeah, there's no front seaming in arm holes, in arm size at all. Like that's, there might be, there, that might exist as a thing. <laughs> it does not exist as a thing in my world. Like I have no idea how you would do that. So just don't do that. That's like the easiest answer. <laughs> okay, this one is from UFO Collective and <laughs> this chick is awesome. I love her. Like, go follow her on Instagram. As we are all raw, does that mean we are sashimi or tartare? <laughs> um, I was under the impression that tartare had to be like, why aren't these both sliced though? Like tartare is like cubed and sashimi is sliced and we are neither of those things. Hmm, I feel like you're going for a hot dog conspiracy <laughs> situation, but like, I mean, I guess we're closer to sashimi, but like, yeah, because like, also I think tartare has like, isn't it cooked in acid? Or is that carpaccio that's cooked in acid? Anyway, we're not sliced in any way, so I don't think we're either. What was the first thing you made? Dude, I was like six when my grandma was like, let's make some stuff. And I was like, okay. So, I mean, I assume you mean sewing thing. Uh, actual first thing I made was poop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't even know what it was. It was probably like a, a pillowcase or something or like a, a little... My grandma was really into like drawstring bags. So she probably had me make a drawstring bag first. Have you ever been or would you ever come to a comic con in the UK? I have not and yes heck yeah I would in fact. There is some threat that like if I can go back to the UK at some point there's a con there that's super fun that Kat goes to of Kat's costumery and she and I were gonna go hang out and check that out so that might happen. 
What names did your parents consider for you besides Noelle? The two things that I get called all the time, which is highly annoying. People call me Nicole all the time and they do it in the comments of these videos and I'm like, who's Nicole? So Nicole was an actual uh, name that was considered for me, but my last name in the past was Heaney and that does rhyme with weenie. That was fun in grade school. No smell weenie. I keep trying to explain that like, it's really hard to explain like eight year olds that no smell weenie is actually good. Like you don't want that to smell, like it's best if it doesn't. I was a very like straight man kid also who like was funny, but nobody recognized that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Nikki Heaney sounds dumb. So that wasn't a thing. And then the other name was Heather. People call me randomly Heather. Like people will just walk up and be like, hi Heather. And I'm like, nope, Noel. And they're like, oh. So I probably look like a Nicole or a Heather also. So, and that's also really weird for me because like one of my friends is called Nicole and I get called Nicole and I'm like, hey, are you talking to me? You're talking to her, what's happening? So yeah, um, Heather Heaney is also kind of weird. So they compromised and called me Noel. And I was born on the 12th day of Christmas. Actually, I think the 11th day. I think the 12th day of Christmas is Epiphany. And I was born on January 5th. So, because I was born on one of the 12 days of Christmas, I get to be called Noel and answer the no, I wasn't born in December question all the time. Also fun. If you had the chance to change your fate, would ya? Heck no, I like my fate. It's been pretty good so far. Not very many complaints. My life is blessed. I am privileged AF. I try to use my privilege where I can, when I can, to help other people. But I understand that I am, I was born to people who were highly intelligent, who had money. My mom didn't really have money when I was little. We were really poor. But my grandparents had money and, well, not a lot, but they were like self-made and they were really good at savings. So they had like, and they went through the 80s and had savings in the 80s, which meant you made a ton of money because when interest rates go to like 13%, you can put all your money in the bank at 13% and earn a whole lot of interest. So that's what happened. So yeah, um, I was really privileged. Like, I'm white, I live in California, like, I have a lot of things. Why would I change that fate? Like, I feel, I mean, I could be a white male, but right now is not a great time to be a white male, so maybe it's okay. <laughs> what is your favorite Disney attraction? Haunted Mansion Holiday, specifically. I like the Jack Skellington version. Haunted Mansion is my favorite ride. It always has been since I was a very little girl. Um, and the Holiday Edition is running along that. I like, I love Jack Skellington. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. So I find, I find the Haunted Mansion to be much more fun at Christmas time. So I, I like that a lot more. I actually kind of wish they would just leave it like that. Although I do have to say that in Florida at Animal Kingdom, I think they have the ride that has, that's Avatar ride where you ride like the flying beast from Avatar. That ride is mind blowing. Like, so people tell me that the new Star Wars ride is also pretty crazy. So I'm looking forward to those. So my favorite might change, but if you want to go ye olde classic, it's Haunted Mansion. I do love pirates. I, I love all the rides, like Star Tours is like, I love Star Tours. So yeah, I'm in, I'm, I'm here for any Disney attraction. Like really, I just like being in Main Street, like hanging out, looking around, enjoying the atmosphere, having a cookie, like it's good stuff. After all the talk about the status of hot dogs, how do you prefer to eat them? Okay, so I don't love hot dogs, but I do I do like a brat occasionally. Um, I like them with some sauerkraut on them. I am allergic to mustard, so I can't eat that. I don't really like cooked tomatoes, so I don't like ketchup, so that's not a thing. So um, I also like Chicago dogs with no mustard. Everyone who's yelling at me about Chicago dogs all the time can like ratchet it down a notch for this one. I like it with no mustard. I like the onions and onion powder and the peppers and all that stuff in there. Basically I like sour things with savory things. So yeah, I like sauerkraut. I, I will take grilled onions on it. Like I, yeah, especially if I'm in a ballpark or whatever, for some reason, I will totally enjoy that. And if I'm having a backyard barbecue, we will do that sort of thing. All right, so last question. 
Rose the bassoon asks, how are you doing? I feel like people ask this without actually caring, but I care about your answer. Oh, that's really kind. Thank you. I also care about people's answer when I ask them. Frequently I answer, <laughs> and I, I mean this, and it's not a flippant answer, but it comes off as one. It's like, I'm pandemic fine, which means like, simultaneously I am blessed. I have tons of things to do. I am not bored with this. I, this doesn't affect me that much. It's not that bad for me. And also, <laughs> the like, free-floating anxiety of the world and all the crappy things that are happening because of pandemic, because of mass shootings, because of black people getting killed in the streets, because like, just like all of those things makes my like soul just like, Ugh. So it evens out to fine. It's not good. <laughs> it's not bad. But the answer of like, well, <laughs> Okay, so here's the 43 things that happened today, and these are all good, and these all suck. <laughs> Comes out to, like, pandemic fine. So that is the term that I use for it, which is pandemic fine, which means I'm holding it together. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, um, I mean, the weight of the world is pretty heavy. Honestly, it's not great all the time. I don't discount the fact that there's a lot of people in this world that are suffering for a lot of different reasons and we are also trying to go through like a race awakening situation while there's a pandemic going on and everybody is stepping in it all the time with that and you know there's constant police things just I'm just gonna put it under the category of police things where like police are treated badly and police are treating people badly <laughs> so like all those things are happening. Um, I feel like other countries are also weighing in on me because I have friends in them and so like we're getting vaccinated but they don't have enough vaccine there because they're not manufacturing countries. Like we're manufacturing the vaccine so we get to have it first. So I'm watching some of my other friends like not get anywhere near a vaccine, right? So like, I mean, I have Australian friends that are like, years? We don't know. We, we Nobody's telling us when we can have a vaccine, right? And like people here are getting them all the time. So none of that stuff escapes me. I am physically fine. I am taken care of. I'm well fed. I am making a freaking Merida dress. Like, <laughs> I have, like, basically nothing to complain about about my personal well-being and issues. Like, there, I have no personal drama. Like, yeah, costuming drama <laughs> is my only drama. So, there's nothing bad about my life and I feel pretty good about that like my husband's awesome my cats are good everybody's okay Dakota's not dead yet this is fantastic perfect and then there's all the other things so that's a very complicated answer thank you for asking the question <laughs> I am complicated is my answer like pandemic fine means I am complicated and I have feelings about every single thing and they're all over the place and I don't have a generalized answer for how are you doing ever so my friends and I have just come up with this phrase to say I'm pandemic fine, <laughs> which lets everybody know that like, we're all kind of fragile right now, but we're holding it together. <laughs> so hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, I think I'm gonna end here with this because my battery is like, hey, you've been recording for a while. We'll see how long this uh, Q&A session went. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Please leave me comments down below. Let me know how you guys are. Like I actually care about how you are. Um, I don't have a ton of time to be responding to every single comment anymore like I used to, which sucks, but I am reading every single one of them. I'm trying to go through and heart them whenever possible. When they come in, I do literally lay there at night and just like read them all. So I should just heart them when I read them. Sometimes I'm reading them and I'm like, oh, I really want to answer that. And then I like don't go back to it when I'm on my computer, which is really dumb. I should just heart it and let the person know that I read the darn thing. I read every comment, guys. And I really do care about how you guys are. Like, it means a lot to me that you guys leave me messages and comment on things and tell me things that you liked about the video but also things about you and how you're doing and what you're working on and all that kind of stuff so it's not a lie I really do love it it's something I do kind of right before I go to sleep every night so I get to hear from you guys and see how you're doing and hear your stories so it's wonderful anyway I hope you enjoyed this video um the wig is turning out really well and I am loving it so yeah great okay I will see you guys next time with another video, and I hope you're all well. Bye, guys.